Hey guys, I am really excited about today's video. We're actually doing a collab with Sylvia from Write Your Life. If you are not already familiar with her, you're gonna love her. Um, her video is gonna be linked down below in the description and at the end of the video. If you're here from Sylvia's video, hi, welcome. My name's Rebecca, uh, also known as Ganchi, and I post videos twice a week about planner and lifestyle topics. So if you enjoy today's video, I would really love it if you wanted to subscribe so that you don't miss any of those and join our little community here. Today we're gonna to be talking about the topic of moving from strings to rings, from a traveler's notebook to a file of facts or a ring planner, um, and about all of the different details of why and how. So first off, why would you wanna move from a traveler's notebook to rings? They both have their advantages and disadvantages. Personally, I moved from a traveler's notebook into a ring planner because I wanted the freedom of a little bit more movability, of being able to take pages from one section, move them to another. Um, I really love being able to take pages that I'm not using anymore and remove them entirely so that they're not bloating up and chunking up an already pretty full planner. You may also be looking at sites like Peanuts Planner Co. or My Summer Touch and looking at all of the really cool inserts and printables that you can get for ring planners. Some of those you can print out and use in a traveler's notebook as well, but you have a little bit more freedom to pick what each page is going to be individually if you can print them out and then just assemble them yourself. So that's another reason why you might want to move to a ring planner. So you've decided to do it. Great, you've picked a size, you've picked a binder. Now what? First, when you're looking at a traveler's notebook, You've got, you know, four strings in here, so you can do four inserts easily. You can piggyback them to each other and include as many as you really have size for. But you're pretty limited by those strings and by how many rubber bands exist in the universe as to how many um, inserts you're going to include. With the ring planner, the number of sections you have is really only limited by how big those rings are. So you can have a section, an entire tab de dedicated to a single insert if you want to. You could have no sections whatsoever and just a single you know, amount of paper in one section or you can have a dozen sections if you want to. What's nice is that you can take, say, dailies out when you're not using them anymore and not have to worry about maybe your weeklies getting lost. You can move things around a lot, so it gives you a lot of flexibility. So when you're moving into rings, you just have to decide how many tabs you want and what those tabs are going to be for. I actually did a video about a year and a half ago about transitioning from one planner to another regardless of format. I talk a little bit more there about picking your sections and um, rearranging your collections into those sections, so you can check that one out as well when you're done. You also want to look at where you're getting your inserts, picking out all the fun inserts. Start with freebies, that's really a great way to get familiar with a particular insert creator and their format, their printing style, um, and if you like, say, the size of their grid paper. There's a lot of great inserts you can get from, say, Facebook pages or maybe by subscribing to someone's blog. You can get some basics like your dot grid, grid paper, and lined paper and use those really for anything while you decide exactly what you want to invest a little bit more in some ready-made inserts for, say, your dailies, your weeklies, project pages, all of that kind of thing. Just like if you were starting with a blank bullet journal, Starting out with a lot of dot grid or grid paper, depending on your preference, would give you that flexibility to be able to design what you want, and then you can always get a printable later. When I first started out, I purchased a set of dividers because I didn't own a laminator yet, and I wanted them to be a little bit more plasticky. You can do that. Um, there's lots all over Etsy in every size that you can imagine. Now that I do have a laminator, I make my own. I find it's pretty easy to just cut them to size, laminate them, and then trim. Or you could just use cardstock for your dividers or post-it flags. There's nothing that says that you need to have dividers at all. A lot of us just like something a little bit decorative and it makes it a little bit easier to find which section you're looking for quickly. I don't personally label my dividers, but I know a lot of people do or will get ones that are pre-labeled with things like months, weeks, days, projects, financial, whatever. But one thing you're definitely gonna want if you're making your own ring planner is a hole punch. I think this Repesco punch comes pretty highly recommended by everybody I've talked to. It's adjustable, so this allows you to do pretty much any size, six rings, and it's useful for anything, for your inserts, or also if you just wanna take a piece of paper you get it as a handout from a meeting you're at, you just punch it and stick it in. 
And then finally paper. Um, it really does not matter what kind of paper you use. I kind of interchange between a nicer paper and just plain old copy paper. Um, and I find that just copy paper usually works fine. But if you really care about your paper quality, if you're dealing with heavier inks um, or more highlighting, stuff like that, um, the paper I usually use is this, I'm almost out, Georgia Pacific Super Bright Premium 28 pound weight. I would recommend it. I got it off Amazon. So there are some considerations if you're going into a ring planner for the first time, if you're used to traveler's notebooks or bound planners. When you put inserts into a section, you don't have built-in spare paper like you would when inserting a notebook into a traveler's notebook. What I mean, say you're using five pages for five projects, but you want more room for more projects. Well, when you're using a traveler's notebook, you stick in a notebook, you use the five pages, you have the rest of the book ready to go for you. With a ring planner, you stick your five pages in, and then you don't need to put extra paper at the end of that section. You can, or you can keep it spare in the back. If you're using a lot of different kinds of inserts, different specially made inserts, say one that's specifically for project planning, you have to decide how many spare ones you're going to be carrying around. Maybe if you don't do a whole lot in your planner, you'll have lots of extra room in your rings and it won't matter, but I think a lot of us tend to stuff our binders pretty chunkily, and if you do that with rings, you do risk uh, damaging those rings and the rings sometimes aren't replaceable, so you do have to be careful to not overstuff your rings, so you don't want to include too many extra pages that you don't need. So if you're carrying your notebook around with you a lot, you really have to come up with a balance of how many of each kind of spare insert you want to hang around with you and how much you can get away with just leaving at home and filling up overnight or whatever. It's just a little thing, but something that you might not consider if you're used to having a bound notebook or a traveler's notebook. The other thing, because there's no binding at all, you are going to have to sort of move away from that philosophy of a spread being two pages facing each other. You can obviously do spreads because you have those two pages, but if you take them out, they're separate. If you want to archive it easier, it might be better for you to put the, the information on two sides of the same page if you can get away with that. Also consider you put page one and page two of a collection like this, then you turn the page. Are you going to put another collection on the back of that first page? Are you going to leave it blank? It's up to you, obviously, what your personal preference is, but I kind of, when moving to rings, had to move away from that philosophy of a spread being two pages side by side, and more like a collection starts on the right side, and then you turn the page and it continues on the back. I know that Sylvia already mentioned this in one of her videos last week, but archiving a ring planner can be a little bit tricky. Uh, this is my archiving system right now. It's in desperate need of a revamp. So do consider that when you're deciding whether or not you want to move into rings. <laughs> if you are okay with blank pages on the back of your spreads, then that's great. If you're not, um, I know Sylvia will put washi tape on the back of hers, as she showed in her flip through last week. Um, or you could doodle if you're into doodling, or watercoloring, or using it for a second collection. I Me, mean, I've just kind of gotten used to having some blank pages and they don't bother me anymore. So I hope you found that useful, gave you a couple things to chew on when deciding your planner system for the new year. I know that that's coming up and it's exciting. Me personally, I don't think I'm moving anywhere. I think I'm going to stick around with my planner system, the same size, same format for at least another year or <laughs> so far. So thanks for watching my video. Now go ahead and check the link up in the corner or down in the description to go see Sylvia's video. She's going to be talking about moving from rings to strings and considerations there. And again, if you came over here watching that one first, welcome. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, there's a subscribe button down below. It would mean so much to me. In comments, let me know what your plans are for the new year. Are you switching into a new planner system at all? Or are you sticking with what you've got? I will see you guys in the next video on Sunday. Bye.